So Simo, what do we mean by productivity tools? What kind of productivity? Yeah, so so throughout the day, we'll have you have run many of the exercises already and examples, and you have encountered probably many errors. And and you have encountered many, like when you have run code, you get an error or something in your code. And of course, when we are talking about like for example, exercises in, in this course, there is are these are small, small programs that you run. But when you start to write your own program, we'll talk about scripts uh, tomorrow. So a bit more about how do you write and, and also about modules and libraries. How do you write like bigger programs? And when it comes to this, for writing these bigger programs, uh, you usually have this situation where like it's, it's, it's a big thing. <laughs> like, and you can have errors in multiple places. And we are all humans, so we don't write perfect code. Uh, like nobody writes perfect code, and that's like completely normal. And for that, like programmers and people who write programs, they uh, like they have written things that help with the tool, <laughs> help with the uh, help with uh, dealing these uh, problems. And well, the most common is is like if you have an editor that has syntax highlighting, uh, like mm -hmm. Jupyter has. Mm, uh, so okay. like if you have so it's a basically, it's tools that make your human effort more effective. Yes. So so let's say you have a VS Code or something, and you can like you can, uh, uh, it can give you uh, auto -comple completion or something like these are yeah. already production, uh, productivity tools. They improve your productivity when you code, but there's a mm -hmm. different colors of uh, productivity tools, uh, or different types of productivity tools. And these are yeah. the most common ones, of course, but then there's other tools that are specifically designed to fix certain things about your programs or help you fix certain things about your yeah. programs. So, so for example, let's. Let's think about what the Python language is. So, yeah. if you want to give a, a terminal and a okay. Python Python terminal and run the first example that we have there, Let's uh, see. like in the code. So, if you try to run run what we have in the a terminal or Jupyter notebook, uh, you can take a notebook as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah. I'll so. Do... Set it in name. So, yeah, this is a uh, follow along. You don't need to type it this, by the way. But so, so each language has a syntax. So, so, uh, like programming language okay. has a syntax. And sometimes you, like we, you might do something that is not permitted in that language. So, for example, here we, you cannot assign true to be one because, like, you're not allowed to change the true value. So you have get a syntax error. So you have a, a problem in the syntax of what you have been writing. Like you, like the other langu programming language doesn't understand what they're doing. Of course, in this case, it's yeah. like a trivial <laughs> uh, problem. <laughs> but if you have like a, if you have a big program and you for, forget to write one extra bracket or one extra comma yeah. somewhere or something, you you get the same syntax error, and it can be really tedious to to find out this, uh, out. what, yeah, especially if it's I, at the end of your like program. I guess slow, yeah, like it's better to know right away rather than yeah. have to yeah. save it. So, and run so it and... for for these, uh, for this reason, people have written these linters. So they remove like lint, <laughs> like that's I think that's the name, <laughs> like why they have been written. So they remove like extra stuff, uh, yeah, and, and bad stuff from your code, and they can spot these syntax errors. So, so mm -hmm. some popular linters are this rough PyLint and Flake Eight, but for this yeah. example, let's let's try with uh, PyLint, which is should, should be installed in the example. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll type. So in order to open the script, so we'll talk more about this tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, let's here's what I recommend. I can right click and copy the link. And in Jupyter Lab, go to File, Open from URL, and Paste the link. Okay, I have to use Control V, and click Open. 
And here it is. So it's both saved the file and has opened it in the yeah. Jupyter Lab here. Yeah. And and this okay. program, like like usually when you get programs on the internet, when you use code by other people, or if you write a code, you might write it as a script. Like in this case, it's an example script. And by quick glance, it looks like Python code. So what's the problem? And but but let's try to use PyLint to check if there's any problems here. So the examples okay. here use the command line. Uh, so yeah, uh, there is possibility is of something... getting these linters working in Jupyter Lab, but unfortunately, well, you need to install specific packages for that. And uh, yeah, and for this yeah. example, so let's try with the terminal. So we're showing from the command line. We think we've made this where if you're using the Anaconda, this should work on all operating systems. But if not, then take a step back, watch us, and don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So you don't need to run these new... uh, examples uh, while we are running them. So I've made a new terminal here. And I can scoot this down here. So it shows I'm in all. Oh... I wanted this to open in the terminal. If I click plus here. OK, so opening it this way has put me at the right place where my Python stuff is. OK, so what do I do? I try running the lint. Or... Yeah, let's try running pylint and, and run the example. Uh, pylint lint example. Yeah. So. I push tab, it filled out the name. I push enter. Yeah. And okay. Error. So so now we get an Syntax like an error. error. So we say we see that there's like a like first the name of the file, like line line lint example.py. Then we get a line number four. And then uh, we get a 31. I'm not certain what the 31 actually is. Uh, I think it's called Maybe like a uh, yeah, column 31. Uh, and then we get an error code like E something, like an error 0001, mm -hmm. passing failed, unmatched bracket. So if we now look at yeah. the line four of the code and, and scroll down, we notice that there's an extra extra bracket there. Well, actually, yeah. the Jupyter Lab uh, highlights it for us. It it marks it as yeah. red That's already, nice. but yeah, which is nice, and, okay. and we we probably would help you not make this uh, error, but it's easy to like yeah. see that, okay, like there's a... Yeah. Uh, now that now that we see it, okay. it's we can remove it. So let's remove that yeah. and save the file. I remove that. I save. How do I save here? Mm. File save all, I guess, works. And then we rerun the linter. Yeah, let's rerun it and, and see what happens. So here in this terminal, I can push the up arrow key instead of typing the whole thing again. Yeah. So now we, it's running again. Why is it so slow? Yeah, I don't know. And we got plenty of other errors. And, and let's look at these uh, one by one. So okay. maybe if you can close yeah. the tab on the left. The, Side. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So at the top, we see that, okay, on the line one, we get this C something uh, missing module doc string. So, okay, now we, this is like a, like a code style warning that you should have in okay. your module, you should have a documentation string there. But, okay, this is not an error. It's, it's just good practice. So let's not look at that too much. Yeah. On line four, we see, and on, also on line, uh, line four, uh, column four, line four, column nineteen, we and and line five, column four, we see this undefined variable np. Uh, so so the the linter doesn't understand what np is. It hasn't been defined yet, and this yeah. like this is explained by the last line in the error message, which is that on line one we have an unused import numpy. So we imported numpy, just import numpy instead of import numpy yeah. as np. So so that's why we got this error. But it was hard to spot because it was valid code. Like it looked valid, but we had a had a mistake in the code uh, yeah. because we did the import wrong. 
Should I so, fix it? Yes, let's fix it. Uh, if you look at also okay. the the end of the output for the pylinter, you see that it gave a code rating and the code rating was zero because it knows that, okay, this code won't run. So let's give it a zero rating. Like it's zero out of 10, bad code. <laughs> and yeah. now that we have fixed it, uh, let's try running the linter again. Okay, I save all and push up arrow key again. So now we see that uh, it it shows me that shows that the it's still missing the module doc string, uh, so it gives a code warning on it. But the other programs have problems have been solved. So now it uh, now it rates it as eight point three three out of ten, uh, and it shows the previous run. So what was the improvement? And this is oh. to me like the okay. the fun the most fun part mm. of Linter because it it like gamifies the coding like. How high can your yeah. score go? <laughs> like, how can you can you get the ten out of yeah. ten? Like yeah, for the linter, and, and basically the idea behind the linter is that it allows you to spot the errors and fix this kind of like coding style and coding coding problems that you might have in your code before you even run the code. So so you might get like you you get coding done faster and you get a better result out of it. Mm -hmm. So let's try. Um, so okay. should we go to the first exercise already, maybe? Or okay. do we have any questions in the... There's a good question. Why can't the linter show all errors to begin with? So why does it yeah. only show the syntax error first? Yeah, so so, so that's a good question. And I, I think that is related to, um, like, yeah, uh, that's a good question. That's probably how the linter has been designed internally. Like there's different kinds of like syntax errors. There's like e egregious ones, like for example, the true equals one or the the brackets, like like if it doesn't know how to pass the the input. Like basically in, in the first example, we had the extra bracket there. So the linter didn't know that, okay, like how should I pass this, like, like even this text? Because like, I don't understand uh, what's happening here because suddenly we get an extra bracket and I don't understand like is this valid uh, code like it, like it, it doesn't understand the input and in the second example there's something wrong in the input so it's it's like there's a there's a uh, first kind like, of an I error which is like okay they, it, yeah yeah it doesn't understand what the, like we in in the context of the language it doesn't understand that okay what is numpy like this hasn't been said before to me and uh, but of course, like Linter doesn't capture all errors because, like like we said at the beginning of the day, Python is is st strongly typed but not uh, like not enforced. So you might modify the things when the program is running in a way that the Linter doesn't know about, and uh, it might like not spot those errors. But it it will spot a lot of errors. Like the most okay. an annoying ones, the trivial errors, yeah. the ones that you are like, okay, I should have noticed this. Like it will spot yeah. those. So, so for our time yeah. progress, so we've got it's... 25 minutes left. Should we combine two exercises together? Or yeah, well, you... yeah, maybe we can, or, or the second exercise is... Hello more of a demo i would say anyways mm -hmm. so maybe we should okay, go so the exercise should... one and then then go okay. the uh the formatters okay. okay uh so exercise one and how long do we have um so should we yeah should we take 10 minutes it's not that Till long of an exercise 45 okay yeah great so see you in 10 minutes. Okay, bye. Two. Hello, welcome back. So there's some good questions there, but I think they're being answered well enough. So maybe we should go on and have a discussion at the end. So Simo, what's next? Yeah. So I, I'll quickly mention uh, that in the exercise, uh, there's a like a in the exercise there's um 
error that the linter doesn't spot. We can we can point it out if you show okay. the exercise code. Uh, okay. Like and this is for by design. Like this is an example of an error that the linter doesn't spot. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the the code here, it's fairly normal code, but it's so complex that it's hard to say where the errors are. But the error that the linter doesn't spot is is in the axe scatter, where you have one T instead of two Ts uh, in that line. And and the reason why the linter uh. doesn't spot this error is that um, the linter doesn't act, actually import anything when it runs. Like when it runs, uh. it just checks the code. It doesn't actually like import pandas. It doesn't import Matplotlib yeah. or, or anything like that. So it doesn't spot that okay, there's this object that okay. has this attribute that is wrongly named. So so, so like it's in, in, yeah. It doesn't import anything or doesn't go fully deep. Like, well, yeah, it, it 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 usually checks like module, module, like uh, the module level, level yeah, st stuff, yeah. But but usually it doesn't go that deep. So of yeah. course there's other linters that might spot this, but but there are various tools that you can use, various linters you can use. Okay. But yeah, but this is like an example. Linters are no means like uh, perfect, but the thing is that they spot. A lot, vast, vast majority of the, the kind of things that uh, humans might not spot, <laughs> like like yeah. these kind of like trivial things. Uh, I guess it the does... other, yeah. yeah. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Well, I was gonna say. No, I was... It's like it, it's it works well with a human. Like you spot some things easily, but not others, and the computer spots some things that you don't see well. Yeah. And it, it's a tool. It's a tool that you can use or not use. If you don't like linters, you don't have to. But but then you might encounter errors a bit more. Uh, yeah. Okay. But but let's move forward to another kind of like okay. productivity tool that you can use. And this is about style enforcement. So Python is very flexible when it comes to like what sort of programming style should you should use, like what sort of naming should you use. So here's a like few examples. Like you can use different variable naming styles and that you can and these are all valid python uh, but there are for for the reason that like uh, it's flexible it doesn't enforce it but at the same time it recommends certain like standards python developers because like then it makes code easier to read for other people as well and these main the major standards are these like python enhancement protocols or i don't know what what these are called like this pep Pip. Yeah, I think uh, it's it, yeah. protocols. Yeah, they are like recommendations for the community, and and the Pep eight is is one of the most popular ones, which is like set standards of how like okay, like your code should look like this, and then there's like a doc string standard of how the documentation strings should be written, and and different people have different standards. For example, like for the documentation strings, NumPy has its own standard, and and Google has its own standard, and different places have their own standards. But what is usually like nice is that you can use these different kinds of like formatters and linters to enforce a certain standard for your code. So so like I personally, like I don't have that many opinions on my code. I would rather my code be readable than like something like there's this joke about like yeah. why don't people if, if in the if they are in the uh law like uh in a courtroom, and they are asked to tell in your own words, like what, why, why, what happened in the situation. Like nobody just like invents their own words. They use the same words that everybody else uses. Like they don't just like start gobbling up random words. Mm -hmm. They use mm -hmm. the words that other people use, and it's the same thing. So if you use standards that other people use, it makes other people easier, easier to read your code and easier to write your mm -hmm. code. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier to let the like a formatter or linter uh, determine the standard than write like and yeah. then uh, fix it yourself. So in the example, let's do the example here. So we'll use this. Uh, so do yeah. right here. Yeah. So okay. if you download the code here, so this code looks pretty awful, right? <laughs> like like it's by design. It's supposed to like like look awful. It works. Like it it it's completely working code. But like I don't like it. Like it doesn't yeah. look pretty like to me. There's like weird... yeah, there's this weird spacing, weird variable yeah. names, and all sorts of things. And like it's it's not pretty. And 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 that. Okay. So let's do it. Yeah. I'm gonna 
copy the link, go to file, open from URL, paste the link and open. Okay, I'm gonna move this to the top here. Yeah. So yeah, it, it works and it, it calculates this pi estimate using this data drawing <laughs> method, but it's it's yeah uh, and it gives like uh examples there, but but it looks pretty awful. And yeah, and should I try to run it? Yeah, you can try to run it. Yes. Um uh, maybe try try it from the command line. Huh. Yeah, so, so it gives like it. We'll see more how these scripts work tomorrow. So yeah. this doesn't make sense. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. But but the main thing is like how can we make it better? So let's let's try first running like PyLint on it. Uh, so sorry, Flake Eight on it. Uh, Flake Eight is this kind of like linter and uh, code syntax uh, like checker. And if you look at what sort of in, like things it gives. It gives various of these, like okay, like Spaces, you should fix this, space. and you, yeah, and yeah. and what we can do, of course, is to, we can manually fix these, and it's it makes mm -hmm. the code better. But we can also use a formatter. So one of the most common formatters is this uh, black by uh, Python Software Foundation, which is mm -hmm. like this opinionated formatter. So it has its own style, and it wants to enforce that style. So it's it's a play on the Henry Ford's like. Uh, you can have oh, the model T, the car, the comes from. yeah, in in any okay. color as long as it's black, <laughs> like like yeah. that that famous okay. quote. So so it tries yeah. to enforce its own style. So let's try to run black on this uh, code example. Okay. So, and I have been installed black, but it should come to me. It's in the so in the environment. Called. In the it's in the code environment if you have if you have installed them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so now so it's reformatted. It's reformatted. It. Yeah. So you probably need to open the file again or reload it or. Uh, Is there a reload yeah. Python file from disk? So now we see that okay. like things Thanks. happened. So so if we compare what's at the bottom and what's here. Like suddenly the the for example between the brackets like all of the extra spacing is, spacing is gone, uh like yeah the, some of the spacings are gone and 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 like the things have been organized in a in a bit better way. If you if you now run the flake eight again for it, uh, let's let's ask it okay. what it says uh, uh, about this. So I just pushed the up arrow yeah. key twice there. Okay, so one line too long. Yeah. So uh it line yeah. Line five. So 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 it says that okay, like like usually there's this character limit of eighty characters so that it can fit into a terminal. Like okay. but it's it can like you don't have to go you don't have to enforce any standard, but but that's common when yeah. when people do it. Uh, if you would have like you, in your environment you probably don't have this pep eight naming package. That is in the example mm -hmm. and in the example environments, but it it doesn't really Easy. matter. But it would give uh, if you scroll a bit up, uh, it's up uh, like there. It would give those warnings. Uh, so so Here. the name of the package is is a bit above, uh, but it's but those are warnings. Okay. It would it would give those warnings. Okay. So you can install into Flake Eight these. Mm -hmm. uh, additional like style guides there's a huge yeah. amount of these extensions and one of these extensions gives warnings about variable names that don't abide by the pep 8 convention okay. so for example it okay. would say that the function name should be lowercase and the yeah. uh, variable should be lowercase so the, those pi numbers yeah. there because like the, those are basically the standards yeah. so, so but but it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really matter. Like you can you can go by the standards that you want to. Like you, all of these tools yeah. are meant for for you to enforce what what you think is good code. But of course, they are also to like help others read your code. But you don't yeah. have to use any of these tools. But usually, like at least for me, it it like gives me a peace of mind that my, like I haven't I haven't mm -hmm. written like code that looks bad for other people yeah. to read. Because like then it makes harder for them to use the code that yeah. I've written. Because it's a collaborative effort, so, and that's why people use these yeah. formatters and and linters. So 
here, well, do we have more or should I ask a philosophical question? Shoot. This is, so my problem with things like code formatters, so for example, this number 11 here, to me, how it is now with these spaces, I would, if I was writing this myself, to me, this is clearly easier to read. Yes. And yes. like the way that things, so like I like the um, idea, but the implementation, if I'm running black on my own code, it's usually making it easier to read in places I don't care about and harder to read other places. So what I think, and I, I, I tend mm -hmm. to use this white space a lot to like group things so I can mentally understand what's going on or align things vertically. But my proposed solution to this dilemma is if it's a small issue of my own project, I know I'm formatting it well myself anyway. But whenever it's someone else's project, or if it's a big project, a random contribution coming in is probably worse than I would want. So there it's better to make it uniform, even if the uniform is not exactly what I would want. Hmm. Do you have any I thoughts on this? Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. And I, the, I will also mention that there's like, like what I usually myself do is that I, I usually pick the tools I want to use, like the linters or formatters I want to use. And then yeah. you can, for all of these tools, you can specify a different, like, mm -hmm things that they want to do there's different flags and configuration parameters and usually yeah. they are like uh like black rc or so, black like 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 some configuration yeah. or file that you can specify that okay don't care about these things yeah i want to like i i want you to worry about these things and not these things and then yeah. you can enforce like throughout the project like a consistent style yeah uh but, so but like leaving black... your own like things there there's also like alternative linters that for example fix mm -hmm. like google has its own linter that fixes these uh yeah. like like these multiplication things but but i agree yeah. like like the code the formatters like it's the same with chat gpt or something like that the chat gpt has seen code and it writes code yeah. but of course it doesn't understand code in a sense that mm -hmm humans do so so for us yeah. we might have a different kind of like yeah. perception of the code and and see some code better like to be better than the other one uh and, yeah. and more visually pleasing or something like the pattern is yeah. looks nicer or something yeah there's i don't know how much more time we have but there's a really good question number 71 do linter spot type mismatches should so, we go to the notes now are we done with the lesson yeah, I think we're done with the lesson. Like this, this is okay. just a quick demo. Uh, there's other like yeah. in the in the lesson. There's also like mentioned about how you can in in like automatically integrate into this to your Git, so that whenever you like run a commit, it will automatically run these linters right. and it will say to you that okay, like you have a problem in yeah. your commit or something. Uh, but yeah, let's let's go to yeah. the we can go to the like the cooldown of the. Okay, but but the idea behind this is that so like there's are. there's huge amount of these linters and huge amount of these productivity tools, but there are these tools like that's the most important things. And like yeah. if you don't know if you feel unsure about your code, and if you don't know what how you should write your code and that sort of things, the formatters and linters can make you write better code because you, um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like you you can. Uh, they they can help you with the the like the hard decisions of how should I uh, how should I yeah. um, write my like um, my code and it, like you don't have to worry about code style that you're using you just follow what the linter says and and I personally do that a lot because I don't want to like think about I don't have that many mm -hmm. opinions so I I would rather like somebody else yeah. has decided the thing already <laughs> so it's it's better to follow their lead. They probably have good reasons for it. Like, like I, I, I usually follow that sort of a paradigm. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was looking at other things and adding the feedback to the notes. Um, mm. Did did we already answer the do linters detect type mismatches? Yes. Yeah. I'll I'll mention that. So so 
like Python, for it, example, it's not strongly it's not strongly typed, so the types can change mm -hmm. throughout the code runtime. But there are like type hints that you can put into your code, and and various programs, for example, or various libraries like NumPy and Matplotlib and everything, they 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 do this in in the code. Uh, so that then you can, if you write your type hints into your code, uh, you can run these static, uh, th static uh, code checkers that basically like go through your code, they run the code, and then they like check where the, is if their type suddenly changes or if they're com incompatible types or whatever. There are tools for this, and and it just depends on like how production code you want to write. Like normally when we write like scientific code, it's not necessarily like very like you don't have to worry about types that much but if you write like a core library if you want to write a library that other people are using then it might be a good idea to add the type in so that like yeah it, it becomes more uh more easy for for other people to to use that then but but yeah like on a normal small program i don't know if it's necessary to use the type hints. Yeah. It depends on the size of the program and the amount of collaborators as well. Like if you have thousands, like I think somewhere in Black's website, they said that there's 20 million lines of codes formatted with Black. 20 million? Wait, yeah. formatted or? Formatted, yeah. Form yeah. Mm -hmm. So so there's so many big projects that are using it. Like no human like would yeah. want to do that code formatting for their job. <laughs> Basically, like I wouldn't want to do it. Like I wouldn't want to be like a type checker in a, in a big company checking like is the code looking good but there's tools for that okay uh any other comments or things to discuss here mm. uh, so this is question 73. I think you can configure many of the linters for own preferences, like what to ignore and so on. Also, Simo, uh, I think you hinted at this. Can black be configured to not do certain formats? Or yeah, I, I, only one I think of all black? of all of them have like huge amount of flags. So so okay. uh like it's it yeah. there's like a like usually what you do is you start at uh, start from the basic configuration and then you drop out certain things. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's it's usually like uh, you can mm -hmm. you can skip various uh, like yeah things. Yeah. Okay. Um. And this question seventy four: Is it possible to use X with tool Y? The answer is usually yes, but the person you ask usually won't know because there's so many combinations. So do your own web searches and probably you can figure mm. out how to. But but if you're using any of the popular things like for like in the question it's PyCharm, but if you're using VS Code, Vim or whatever, there's like a million extensions like like that that yeah. combine like like Richard said, tool <laughs> X with tool Y. Yeah. And usually you get like a button that like like if you press this button, it mm -hmm. will run this uh, linter or whatever yeah. uh, for your code. And usually many IDEs, they already come with some of these tools. Like they, they mm -hmm. will automatically flag you syntax errors mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But it's important to know that like these tools exist and, and you can utilize them. And it's it's not like cheating, like 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 who cares? <laughs> it's not like, yeah. like yeah. It, 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 it isn't the, like you 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 did it the hard way. Okay, now you like won a medal. Like coding yeah. isn't like a like a competitive video game or something. Like it's yeah. it's like, like coding your life is a yeah. Your, it's your main. You can go the easy uh, route. Your main work isn't a homework assignment where if you don't do it yourself, it's plagiarism. Hmm. Your yeah. real work is. Like, yeah. Like like for example like. You're doing it. Like one would think that, okay, for example, so like it's, we're we're past yeah. the time now. So yeah, if, let's go. like we are done with everything for today, we might still hang out talking for a little bit. But thank you for coming. And if you have more, please um, please fill out this feedback for today. It is very important, and we always look at it before preparing the next year. 
Okay. So what were what were you saying before? Yeah, I was just saying that like like if you think about like let's say like uh, the fresco on Sistine Chapel or something like like Michelangelo didn't paint the whole thing. Like he had a huge amount <laughs> of like helpers, uh, mm. like planning and and like doing that painting yeah. or like like David like he had people people helping with with the initial steps of the work mm -hmm. like 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 applying like a low level low layer paint and yeah. that sort of stuff so so coding is a similar kind of thing like if you you can the hard things are what you really want to do with the code the yeah. the easier things of okay how do i write this you can use chat gpt or whatever like linters and formatters to help you with that getting the idea across yeah. and the, the mm -hmm. you can you can get the art out of the marble block but like yeah uh yeah it's it's not cheating to use like <laughs> helper tools it's it's just a way of improving the productivity yeah okay hello radovan any comments on today before we hang up yeah i really like this uh, productivity tools session it was good to edit so i, yeah, I love new I think things it's... And these are tools I use. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I would want to, like, next year, we have to figure out how do we add it into the Jupyter. Uh, because, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. like, just we maybe need to yeah. make the environment so it's already there or something. Because it's possible to add these yeah. into Jupyter as well. So, uh, so it, the exercise will be easier to run without scripts. Yeah. But it's also a good preview for tomorrow, since tomorrow we need to do the script stuff. Yeah, tomorrow we'll have a lot of talk okay. about like scripts and also libraries and and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And and also there was mentioned about software architecture in the chat, uh, chat. So we'll be talking about that as well. And these these productivity tools are yeah like Richard said tied to that. So, but yeah. Okay. So should we close out the day? Great. Let's close up. See you tomorrow. So remember to prepare for day three. There's some news here, which you probably already read. Um, remember to give feedback. This this session, for example, was a new session. So it would be nice to hear, like, what can we improve and what would you like to hear more uh, yeah. in the upcoming years? Yeah. OK. Thanks a lot. See you tomorrow. Same time.